There's a reason why many CEOs look like this. They're not driving around in Lamborghinis or showing off their fancy Prada bags. Well, maybe some of them are. But that's actually how you go broke. On the contrary, looking poor can actually make you rich. Now, I know that's a bold statement, but if you've ever heard the term keeping up with the Joneses, then you know what I'm talking about. You're basically giving in to the social pressure to keep up with the financial demands of the people around you to show that you're one of them. We are social animals after all, so we have that instinctive drive to fit in with the group for fear of being left behind. So if my neighbors are joining the country club across the street and that's all they can talk about, now I feel like being a part of that group as well. And all that social pressure has become so much worse with social media. I bought a new house. You get the spirit of ecstasy that comes out. They make being rich look like you have to have a fancy mansion, a lot of cars, fancy watches. But behind all of that are mounting loan payments and crippling debt. That's not control. That's lack of self-control. Okay, so your idea of who might be rich or who might be poor might not always be accurate. For example, there are a lot of celebrities that we assume have a ton of money, especially if they're famous, but that's not always the case. For example, Michael Jackson, huge iconic pop star. He actually reportedly ended up dying with $400 million in debt. And Nicolas Cage, you probably remember him from the National Treasure movies and a bunch of movies back in the 2000s. He was one of the most famous actors at that time and reportedly made over $40 million in 2009. But he also ended up going bankrupt and spending all of his money. How much money did you end up owing to the IRS and to your creditors? I paid them all back, but it was about $6 million. And what about Mike Tyson? He earned over $400 million over his entire career, but was knocked down with a $23 million debt in 2003. And lastly, the Baldwin family, Alec Baldwin, Stephen Baldwin, Haley Baldwin. Well, Stephen Baldwin filed for bankruptcy in 2009 for not filing his taxes, and then also owing money on a couple of mortgages. So things are not always as they seem with rich people. The fact is, buying all these pointless things is what makes people go broke in the first place. But what does being broke even mean? It means having more liabilities than assets. Simple as that. People in the US especially are living well above their means. And I know it's been a tough job market out there for everyone, especially because of rising inflation. But the reality is we have to decrease our lifestyle creep during these tough times. That sounds harsh, but that's the very reason why people like Warren Buffett still lives in the same house he did growing up. If you really think about the people who look rich, it might be that person who lives in a $2 million mansion that you walk by every day, or even the VP at your company who drives her Rolls Royce to work every single day. I'm not questioning whether or not they make a lot of money, but does buying those things make them rich or does it make them broke? It's basically giving away money and a lot of money to maintain a specific lifestyle that demands more and more money. You get stuck in this constant cycle of working more, to make more, to buy more, and suddenly you have nothing. You can't stop either. Okay, so part two, looking poor is more or less a figure of speech. I don't want people thinking that I'm romanticizing being poor. I'm definitely not. But the point is to live well below your means. Look like you make less than you actually do, and then maybe, just maybe, you have a chance of actually becoming rich. So let's look at a couple case studies. So you guys all probably know about Graham Stephan. He's a YouTuber, and he's famous for being super wealthy and frugal. How about excessively economical. That, that sounds pretty nice. So a lot of what he preaches is not spending money. He goes and shops in the clearance section. He also wears very modest clothing and has a very routine lifestyle. I don't even think he travels that much. And I did watch a podcast where he said his net worth was around $20 million. So he clearly is worth a lot, but he doesn't always look the part. And he does that very purposefully. Another example is Pierre Omendiar, who is the founder and chairman of eBay. His net worth is $8.1 billion. He was famous for saying, I had the notion that, okay, so now we have all this wealth, but not only could we buy one expensive car, we could buy all of them. As soon as you realize that you could buy all of them, then none of them are particularly interesting or satisfying. Wise words from someone whose net worth is $8.1 billion. And lastly, David Karp, the founder of Tumblr. His net worth was at least $200 million. 
million. But he preferred to live a very simple lifestyle. His one splurge was a 1,700 square foot loft in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. He reportedly paid about $1.6 million for the space, but leaves half of it empty. He doesn't have many books or clothes and is actually kind of surprised when people do fill their homes up with stuff. These people all have one thing in common. They don't let elevated lifestyles control their lives. They've let go of their need to keep up with appearances in order to fit in with their peer group. And in fact, they've figured out how to make money work for them rather than the other way around. And don't get me wrong, it is a hard thing to achieve. I have trouble with this sometimes too. If I make more money one month, then I am more tempted to spend more that month as well. I feel like I deserve to spend it on something even though I don't actually need it. If you make that thing a recurring cost, however, now you've put yourself on the fast lane to living paycheck to paycheck. That's why I always put a certain amount of money into my savings and investments as soon as I get my paycheck. That way it's out of sight, out of mind. The rest I use as spending money, which isn't always enough to regularly go out to eat or buy cute little decorations for my house. My house may be bare. Is anyone there? but at least I'm not struggling to try to pay off credit card debt because I bought too many scented candles. Those things are probably bad for you anyways. It doesn't mean to never have fun. It just means being mindful about what you actually need. So let's break this down. Your net worth is just your assets minus your liabilities, as I mentioned earlier. Decrease the liabilities and increase the assets to become rich. In other words, more money in, less money out. It's a simple formula, but it's not easy to achieve. The very first step would be to track your expenses. We've been tracking our expenses for the past six months. And let me tell you, there are so many things that we didn't account for, including a lot of subscriptions. I personally use both Rocket Money to remind me of those subscriptions and just good old manual paper receipts that get transferred into Excel. And that's usually for tax purposes. I've also used Xero, which is a really great tool. The point is, however you decide to do it, there's no way that you can let go of things in your life if you don't even know how much you're spending on those things. By the way, Course Careers also has courses on finance that can be very helpful for this, especially if you're new to finance. Once you do that, you'll need to categorize your expenses. I know, sounds fun, right? A lot of times you'll notice that you spend way more money than you think on coffee at Starbucks or eating out at restaurants that you didn't really need to go to. Those need to be the first to go. It might hurt in the beginning, especially if you live in a place where it's common to go to happy hour every day after work, or if it's easier to just order in rather than cook. Trust me, learn to cook. It'll save you so much money. Once you cut out that first layer, it'll just get easier and easier to continue cutting things out until you hit your savings goals. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Have a savings goal in mind so you're not just aimlessly wandering around trying to cut out expenses. That's not sustainable in the long term. You want to cut it out in a balanced way. So you're cutting out things you don't need while still spending money on things that you really want to. Again, looking poor doesn't mean being homeless or living in an unsafe place. It means cutting out superficial or unnecessary expenses that you really don't need. If you can prioritize what's actually important in your life and you're willing to sacrifice for it, then you'll absolutely achieve your goals. This is the secret formula to becoming wealthy. And it's no longer a secret, but it's like being told that you need to go to the gym and eat healthy regularly to lose weight. It's not sexy and it's not quick. It's a boring process, but it's more or less a guaranteed process for success. If you wanna hear more about tech, finance, or just general knowledge, check out this video that I did last time. All right, see you guys later, bye.